So welcome everyone to the Integral European Conference. In this workshop, Martina Hoes, Misha Dubashia and Ute Weber will be talking about and walking us through Integral Art Lab Dignity with Art by Martina Hoes. Martina comes from Austria. She is passionate about color alchemy, oil painting, and how to transmit higher states of consciousness and the inward reality of the formless, pure self into her canvas. She studied at the Vienna Art School and the Academy of Art Therapy. During her 40 solo and group exhibitions since 1997, she started providing guidance for energetic communication with the paintings to stimulate the viewer's spiritual intelligence and ease meeting one's light of consciousness through her art. I will paste her website in the chat after that. Mishtubashia comes from United Kingdom. He is a British writer and integral thinker who has studied under some of the world's finest research mathematicians at the University of Warwick. He is the author of two novels, Gifted and Dancing with Angels, as well as The Unity of Everything, A Conversation with David Bohm, which has been referenced in academic journals and conferences. Nish is also a public speaker, having spoken at the Humanity Rising Global Summit, the World Unity Week, and the International Science and Consciousness Conference, among others. He has also been featured in the Integral Leadership Review, the world's premier publication of integrated approaches to leading and leadership, along with his dialogue partner, Peter Murray. Last but not least, Ute Weber comes from Austria. And Ute is a Master of Science in a transpersonal researcher and a PhD candidate at the Ubiquiti University at the Academy of Inner Science. She studied philosophy with a focus on the aesthetic experience of art, art history, with a focus on the experience of the numinous in Byzantine art, and founded the Integrated Art Lab Hub to open spaces for experiencing the interconnectedness of heaven and earth, the spiritual in man and the weird in world and universe. In various formats, integrated meditation, integral salon, integral art lab, and others, Ute offers opportunities to develop consciousness, awareness, and creativity, and to realize one's own potential. The integral art lab we experience today is a ULab 2X prototype. Now, as a reminder for everyone, this workshop is being recorded. So if you choose to share something or ask a question, you're also giving your consent to be part of the video replay. And now I hand over to you, Ude. Thank you, Angelica, for this lovely introduction. And thank you, Martina and you, Mish, for our amazing teamwork. And thanks to all participants who now show up and decide to participate in this experiential journey. Please take a moment to really arrive and to land in your body with all your senses, with your feelings, And allow yourself to relate to your soul and with a source in your space in front of this screen and with all of us in here. Relate and connect consciously and sense and be with your breath. 
Become aware of your in-breath and out-breath. And enjoy your and our common presentation here and now. Thank you. Yeah, dignity. Dignity, what is, what is dignity? So in this integral art lab, I would like to invite you to an experiential journey, as I said, structured as follows. We will have a short check-in, a contemplation on and with information, an embodiment exercise of interconnectedness with soul and source, a dialogue on the experience, a resonance exploration in the art gallery, journaling on the painting that you resonate the most with, and a dialogue on sharing insights. And finally, a closing up harvesting what we experienced. And the thesis is that we naturally embody dignity from coherent presencing interconnectedness with the source, with weird. Interconnectedness and dignity, coherence and dignity, presencing and dignity, Yes, in my research, a connection shows up already in the etymology of weird, würde in German. And dignity, dignity is a Latin version. So the Latin version of the meaning of dignity contains a mental perspective interpretation as a particular attitude or as a fundamental law, as we are familiar with. But our sense of connectedness, our perception of being interconnected, our experience of the subtle and our perception of latency and transparency, seeing through, opens up to a more broader, maybe a holistic awareness and changes the meaning, understanding and the embodiment. So, and you may have listened to seen Espen Hagen's talks as he's shared his experiences of the weird universe. And I felt so grateful. Not only Peter Mary invites to experience weird, but also seen as Van Hagen's, and which I feel we are in an appropriate space with our experiment. So this encourages me even more to invite you to participate in this. But let's start from beneath our feet. What is your approach to dignity? Let's check in briefly in diets. So in breakout rooms, simply with your name, where you come from and your relation to dignity. So two minutes per person. Angelica prepared the breakout groups. So, uh, welcome back. Let's take a moment to arrive in the bigger space with all of us. And again, relate and connect to yourself. But how do you feel now? And maybe you notice a difference in your presence 
through sharing with someone else. Thank you very much. And let's continue. I hand over to Nish. Nish, please. Sorry, just unmuted myself. Well, thank you very much, um, Yute. So um, what I'm actually going to now um, walk through with all of you is um, a model that has come to be known as the diamond model, um, which tries to depict the kind of relationships that might exist between wholeness and what we call multiplicity. And then we will see how this may relate to the way of the weird. So I'll bring up the uh, model now. So um, can all of you see that okay? Yeah. Great, thank you. So I'm going to spend sort of 10 minutes or so just exploring this model with all of you. And what I would invite you all to do is as I'm walking through this model, just to listen to this exploration, not just with your mind, but with your whole body. So let's meditate on this together. Let's see if we can notice any resonances or any movements or any impulses within ourselves. And let's listen from where it is in our being, in our body, in our mind, from where this information uh, may be rising. And so let's just be curious about how we individually and collectively respond to this model. And I just invite all of you to follow the words and the feelings behind this model as I explore it with you. So if you look on the screen there, you'll see this diagram. And I'll start by focusing on the word multiplicity, which is just two lines up from the bottom. And multiplicity is the world of separate things and separate events in space and in time. This is the common world in which we all live and have our being and move around the world with which we are familiar with. The suggestion here and the experience here is that underneath this world of multiplicity lies a deeper movement or deeper region, which we could refer to as wholeness, the whole. And our world of multiplicity rests upon that wholeness, emerges from that wholeness, returns to that wholeness over time and also in each moment. And as we emerge from that wholeness in each moment, we create a, a, a sense of separation between ourselves and the rest of the world between what we could call the subject and the object. And that is the first difference or differentiation that we make. And that differentiation then continues to create the, the world of different things and objects and different times and different moments in the world of multiplicity. When we experience the world of multiplicity as somehow separate from or divorced from this underlying whole, we fall into what we may 
refer to as fragmentation. So the parts, the separate parts that emerge from the whole become disconnected from the whole and become fragments. Multiplicity falls into fragmentation. And many of our problems and difficulties and conflicts come from fragmentation, which is a disconnection from wholeness. Ultimately though, the whole and multiplicity are not separate from one another. Both of them exist in what we could call the ground or non-duality, a non-dual wholeness that exists between the whole and multiplicity. So we're always involved in this movement of creation whereby wholeness becomes multiplicity and what we could call evolution whereby multiplicity returns to wholeness. So that's the general model of the general mandala. And now I'll briefly show how this may apply or manifest in what we're calling the way of the weird. So here what we can see is the realm of wholeness or that underlying movement of wholeness is what is referred to in these medieval traditions as the weird. This is the source, the origin of everything. This is the implicate order out of which everything that exists emerges. And this is that realm or that place within ourselves where we can sense and experience the interconnection between all things across space, across time. And as this source or implicate order manifests as the world in which we live or as us, as seemingly separate people, a separation, a seeming separation occurs between the inner and the outer. That inner aspect of ourselves is referred to as the soul, is often referred to as the soul or the heart. That's that part of us that is the individual or the essence. That's the source of our intelligence, our psyche. And the outer aspect of this movement is grounded in our experience of having or being a body. And the body is that part of ourselves that has perceptions, sensations and perceptions of the world. And that interaction that we're enacting in each moment between the inner essence, the soul, the heart, and the outer form, the body, the perceptions, creates what we call the vyoda, which is the outer world, the explicate order. And it is when this outer world or ourselves as manifest beings feel and live a conscious connection with the weird, that is when we discover what we could call dignity. That is when we are consciously embodied as manifestations of or instances of the underlying movement that we call the weird. Once again, as we saw before though, if we disconnect from that conscious embodiment of the weird, we can then fall into an experience of separation or fragmentation as we saw earlier. And that entire dimension whereby the, the weird manifests as the vyoda is what we could refer to as the subtle dimension, which is the interface, if you like, between the unmanifest and the manifest. So we have a process of manifestation whereby the weird manifests as the vyoda and the process of enfoldment whereby our experiences at the level of the vyoda are fed back into the weirder. And that movement continues through time. Ultimately though, the weirder and the vyoda exist in a non-dual relationship with one another. So the, the, the dignity that we embody is not different from the underlying movement from which we have emerged. And finally, 
a quick walk through what we could see as the subtle dimensions of this movement and manifestation of the weird. So as we can see there, the, the weird seems to separate into the inner soul and the outer body. And together, the interaction there between soul and body creates our experience of the Vyoda, our experience of dignity. And if we see the, the various interactions that can take place, we can see the, and feel, and I invite you to see if you can feel this now as I'm speaking, we can see and feel the different aspects of this subtle dimension through which and by which manifestation takes place. When our soul is in deep connection with the weird, we experience the subjective experience of I, that is the realm of intention. And when our soul is in deep connection with the Vyoda, the manifest world, that is when we can experience the dimension of the we, the cultural dimension, when our soul interacts with other souls. And when our body is in interaction with the weird, we can feel and experience the it dimension, the third person dimension of the subtle realm, which we could refer to as the objective realm, the realm of creation. And when our body is in interaction with the Vyoda, the realm of dignity, in interaction with other bodies, that is when we can experience that dimension, that aspect of the subtle dimension, which we can refer to as the social, the social dimension, the fourth person that it's. So in each moment here, we can see how each of these aspects of the subtle dimension are manifesting from the weird into the Vyoda, into the Vyoda. So I just invite you just to feel into that for a few seconds as we move to the next part of our presentation. Thank you, Nis. Thank you. Yes. The next part is to experience, really, to try to relate with your body, your whole system, to relate to the soul, your soul in your body, and to the ever-present origin, to the source, to this weird dimension. So it is an embodiment exercise in diets again. And Angelica, I like uh, to prepare, like you to prepare the diets. And I'm going to, to explain, to describe for you a bit this exercise. So there are two roles. The one person is holding space is presencing, is witnessing what the other person is experiencing. And the invitation is to experience two relations. The first relation is relate to your soul, listen to your body, mindfully follow the movements of your body, let your body guide you. Be with this movement and find a posture. Find a posture that manifests your relation with the soul. And from this first posture, voice in a sentence, I feel, just one sentence, 
And maybe notice from where the movement starts when you relate to your soul. This is the first step. The second step is go further. Open up with your intention to relate to this weird dimension, to the source, to this ever-present origin. And trust, trust the intelligence of your body. Find a posture. Notice, maybe you may witness from where your movement starts. Find a posture. And voice from this posture, I feel. And the other person holds the space, witnesses, listens to the resonances in the body. And then you change roles. And after that, you enter into an empathic dialogue simply in sharing what did you notice are there differences between the two top postures when you relate to the soul or even when you open up with your awareness that you are interconnected and maybe you notice from where your body moves and how does it feel to presence weird through your body? So we have a lot of time for this. Angelica, you prepare the breakout sessions? I would say though, three minutes per person to find these two postures. First person, three minutes, the second person, and three minutes for a dialogue. So in sum, to introduce, to enter, and to leave about 10 minutes. Yes. Do you have any questions on this? Thank you. That simply try. <laughs> Be courageous. Let's go. Welcome back, everyone. Good to you. Welcome back. Yes. And again, let's take a moment to sense and feel you and the others in this space and the field between us. And um, I like to invite you to share. Mm what you experienced. So just a few voices before we meet the artworks. We have some minutes to listen. Um, you may also share in the chat for sure, but maybe you like to raise your hand and Angelica will support you, support you in this. Or just please unmute yourself and come forward. What did you notice? 
Is there a difference between the postures when you will really trust your body to move, to relate, to connect to your soul? Or when you open up to the weird? What do you feel? Or how does it feel to presence weird? <coughs> mm, here and now. And even, yes, please go ahead. Thank you for the exercise. Um, it was it was very nice, and um, for me, uh, the first part was required in order to um, be able to feel the weird. Because for me, first it was the movement was that I was really in my head, trying to think into it rather than feel into it. And so um, my sentence was uh, when I finally arrived to being connected to my soul is that I can let go. I feel I'm letting go. And the other uh, feeling that came, the other movement is, is opening up. And it really was in the reflection of my partner when I saw her uh, opening up to the wholeness. Mm. So thank you very much. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Mm. Yeah. So calming to opening up to the source. Everything became so much simpler, easier. I felt loved in a really unconditional way. So every, every stance, every uncomfortable movement I had in the body before has just disappeared. So thank you so much. Mm, thank you for sharing. Beautiful. Mm. And I also like to invite all of us to listen deeply with your whole body on the information that has been shared right now. Listen to the resonances in your body. Where do you perceive this information? And how does it feel for you? And I like to invite you to stay in this interconnection. and to see, feel, sense, perceive the artworks that we are going to meet right now. So in a minute, we will share, Angelica will share the link to the art gallery. It's a virtual art gallery and you may open the link it goes to a website and you scroll down the website and there are 15 artworks from Martina. So, and you have a lot of time, so 10 minutes to go through the art gallery. And the invitation is that you listen deeply what you see 
what you feel, what you sense with your whole body. So from this embodiment, And you go and see all the artworks, but finally you choose one, only one painting that you resonate the most with. There are 15 paintings and you listen to the resonance in your body in relation to the artworks and you choose one. And you get a few questions and I ask Angelica to pose the questions in the chat. You stay with the painting, it's very simple. Stay with one painting. This is my painting that I resonate the most with. And you deepen into this painting. And there are questions. What do I see? And you take a moment to see into the painting, to see through the painting. What do you feel? And you listen to your feelings. And it takes a moment. And what do you sense? And also this takes a moment to relate to your senses, to your perceptions. And you write spontaneously without thinking. And maybe after these layers, you become aware of a new insight. You write, I become aware of. And finally, at the end, you may relate your experience with the weird, with, to your experience with the artwork. And maybe there's a sentence and you write it. So you have 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, I'll gong with my voice, gong, and this gong brings you back. And we would like to invite you to share your journaling on the painting you choose, and the artist herself will present the painting. So please, Angelica, share the link in the chat. All done. Wonderful. So go to the website, scroll down, open painting by painting, take your time, 10 minutes, and dive into, stay with one, and voice. What you feel, you sense, you see, you become aware of. 10 minutes, thank you. I don't see a link in my screen. In your chat, go into the chat, Josef. Oh, okay, now I see it. Thank you. Thank you.
There are still about three minutes. And there's a good minute before we continue. Please come to an end with your favorite painting you resonated the most with. And it would be a wonderful gift for all of us if you could share your journaling, your insights. So, Here's the gong, gong. Welcome back. And uh, I like to hand over to Martina. Yeah. So, I welcome you back. And um, I hope you enjoyed your journey with the artworks. And I will share my screen now. So, um, yeah. So we have the gallery. And I invite you to share what you have noticed and um, your insights or you, whatever you want to share with it. I will show and present the painting you were with during that time. Go on, please touch yes. in on with yourself. Wonderful. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, let me say thank you. Um, your art is amazing and I my, my first feelings were that these are portals to the soul and to the universe so um, my uh, chosen image is the bluest one and uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was really interesting to um, discover my feelings, how they have changed and how I discovered what I'm seeing. Uh, of course, I was focusing first in the middle part and I, I saw like flames and it was exciting for me and very refreshing. And how I opened my eyes and my soul to the wholeness of the image, to the outer parts of the image, I, I started to see the flower, the flower of life. 
and and like waves Wait. i imagine and i i sense like a wave of energy from the center and in the outer uh, space for me it's calmness so it's like the the ocean when it's still so in the middle there's energy there's it's happiness inside and and as it goes out it smoothens out and it's for me this the these were the feelings and what i was experiencing and thank you very much it's a beautiful image <laughs> Mm. Thank you, Georgina. Mm. Thank you for sharing. Someone else would like to share their experiences with us. I can continue. Christina, yeah. Sorry, I'm just uh, getting back because your beautiful picture took me into a altered state of mind. <laughs> so <laughs> I am I'm a bit meditated and, and too relaxed, maybe. <laughs> they are beautiful. Thank you for sharing them. Um, I choose the first one on the third row. No, not this one. In the third row. I understood. Yeah, in the. Last one. One. Yes. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found actually all your paintings beautiful, and and they literally talk to me. Um. And, and I could feel the vibration and, but that was my favorite ones because this is the only one where two entities, two essences are connected. And, and it really called me because, because for me, uh, this is one of the most beautiful way on the earth to connect to the absolute, to connect to each other as humans, as human with uh, animals or, or any other way. And, and, and this is why it, it called me so much. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not back 100% yet, so. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much. Beautiful. I can feel it. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Mm. As we are a small group, we have the chance that uh, if you want, we all can share the, the, the time in it. If that's okay with you, I would like to join in for a few minutes because I had the time to go through it too. And I loved very much the invisible gift. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's beautiful how the the gift it, right in the middle appears and disappears and appears and disappears and then everything is in movement. It's a wonderful picture. And as my meditation states change, the picture changes. And I wonder, have you... I put that in words. Have you painted the different stages of whatever? How was it for you painting these pictures, Martina? I'm sorry, I 
<laughs> making the subject an object now. <laughs> no problem, yeah. I paint uh, in oil colors and I always paint in many layers. So I paint several times for a longer time on the paintings. And this one was very, <laughs> it was very interesting because I couldn't, I, I didn't know what it is <laughs> until the end. And then at the, at the last layer, it just showed up <laughs> like, uh, and then I could see the gift in it, but only in the last layer before it was, there was something missing all the time. <laughs> and uh yeah, and then it showed up the gift in it. And it is exactly what you also said, this um, vanishing and coming back again. And there's so much in it that I called it invisible gift. <laughs> there is a lot of movement and it resonates when you speak of that. I can feel it in my whole body. Yeah. Thank you. It's so strong, also invisible. <laughs> mm. Thank you, <laughs> Angelica. Does anyone else want to share or? If there is no one else, I would love to share. Uh -huh. um, I would love to go with the last one with liberty. Mm. You know, when I discovered this painting yesterday already, wow, I, I was blown, I felt blown away. So I see so much in it but I, I want to go in the feeling so i feel lightness so i feel this lightness and i sense in my body a kind of opening up it starts from the spine from my back and the spine and it it opens up in the front so it's a bodily widening opening up and I sense a kind of rising because what I feel and sense is this, this transparency. It is this dust. And I sense myself rising and being in this subtle fear. So it is like, like a bit the remembrance uh, onto a butterfly in it. Yeah, this opening up, this rising and feeling I am in it. So that what, what, what came to me. Thank you very much. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you, Ute. It's always so inspiring for me to see my painted paintings uh, through the eyes of others, actually, it's always a gift. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think we have to continue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I stop. Thank you very much. Your sharing is very beautiful. So, um, we'll have to take a round again um, to allow yourself to reflect on your experience, to listen to the inspiration or the insights you received.
and you sh to share them in this intimate circle if they are Yes, please, Joseph, unmute yourself. Hello, everybody. Actually, I wanted also to say something to the picture I've chosen, but I didn't know how to. Huh. Anyway, so I can maybe say it now. I've chosen the light speeding. And what I felt was a huge energy. And I was aware of an incredible power which was combined with that. And if I sense into my source or in the source, then I feel like out of the source, being this incredible energy which would be so powerfully used to the benefit of everything because it would never be aggressive or painful to others. It would just have the potential to change so much. And that's what I wish for myself, to come into this state of being, beingness, and having this incredible energy which would empower me to do something good for this world. That's my hope not just for me, for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Joseph. Martina, would you like to share the painting? Just an explosion of something for me. I was painting it um, after very clear experiences um, after a meditation. I already opened the eyes and I felt being in that stream of pure consciousness and it was in light speed. <laughs> so. After that, I painted this painting. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Joseph, for your beautiful words and this wishing for everyone. It really touched me deep. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Um, yeah, due to the time, um, we need to find um, some closing, some harvesting. What do you, do you take away from this? Exercise. the information, contemplation, the embodiment, meeting the artworks, relating to others, listening, perceiving, diving into, in relation to dignity, embodying the weird,
Is it easy? Can we do it? Can we practice it? <laughs> In daily life? Now and tomorrow? Yes, Tatina, go ahead. Thank you very much for all the exercises. Um, I, I have a tattoo. This is my first tattoo. It says, born to create. And um, somehow along the way, sometimes I forget because I'm a lot in my head that uh, I was not just born to create, but I live to create. And for me, my takeaway is that through connection, through not fragmentation, but being whole and with connection and connecting with others and, and through art, it is possible. Uh, I, I was laughing when you asked that, can we do it? Is it difficult? For me, sometimes it is, but yes, we can, we can practice and, uh, and it is a very uh, calming and very warm feeling for me that I can do it. And thank you all the exercises and your presence because it helped me to be here and uh, to realize that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Beautiful. Joseph. I just want to add to what I've said. I just realized it's for me, it's really to take away. It's, it's not about practicing anymore. It's just about being it. Yeah. And that's really how I feel after I've been going through a, a horrible thing last half a year. I went through hell. And I came out of this like newborn. Mm. And so I can take this as a gift to be it and not to talk about it anymore yeah. and not to practice anymore because it's just there. This is so simple. And that's, that's what I tried. Not, I, I, not I'm trying, I'm being it. That's mm -hmm. my takeaway from that. Wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to put in words what I will what I will bring with myself from this course. Um, this simple, warm, loving feeling that the exercises and your paintings gave me, for sure, and and that everything is just so simple. And we should not overcomplicate it and fragment it ourselves. So thank you so much. Then um, I'd like to say some final words. Thank you for participating, for showing up, for presencing this quality. I'd like to thank Angelica, our angelic technical host, facilitator. Thank you so much for supporting us in this. Thank you. Mm. And thank you, Nish. Thank you for your presentation for the implementation, the emergence of your diamond model with the way of weird. And uh, thank you, Martina, for your amazing artworks that connect us with these fears. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.
Thank you, Martina, Ute, and Nish for a wonderful and deep workshop. Thank you.